evening and welcome to On Deck with Mercury. My name is Mercury Payton and I am the town manager here of Vienna. And uh, tonight we have a conversation about the capital improvement plan. Uh, basically our CIP, our capital improvement plan, is a long range plan that talks about how we look at scoping out and planning for our long range projects. Everything from our road projects to structures and buildings and everything in between, we like to plan those out years in advance and make sure that we're thoughtful about those, those projects. So tonight I have with me three of my, my friends here, my colleagues. Um, I have the Director of Finance, Marion Surface, and I have um, Director of Public Works, Mike Gallagher, and Director of Parks and Recreation, Leslie Herman. Uh, so tonight we'll have um, a really good conversation, I think, about these projects. And uh, before we begin, also I have with us the Economic Development Manager, uh, Natalie Moncow, and also our town attorney, Steve Brilla, is with us as well, and our police chief, Jim, Jim Morse. So uh, we'll begin by talking about uh, the CIP. And so, Marion, you're probably the most natural person to have uh, this discussion, or at least get us, get us started. So what is the CIP, and how does it differ from the general fund? Oh, thank you, Mercury. A uh, capital project is a big project. We're sitting in a capital project right now. This gym, the community center had a major renovation. That's an example of a capital project. Many of our capital projects are things like road improvements, sidewalk improvements, uh, stormwater improvements, um, the town green, the, uh, the, the community center renovation, and other buildings. Uh, generally, they uh, to be a capital project or be considered for a capital project, it's a big long-term project like that and has to cost at least 5000 and many of those projects cost a lot more than that. Um, but the difference between a capital project and our general fund or water and sewer fund is that uh, the general fund is really for our everyday operations. So mainly the salaries of our employees and their costs of supplies and things they need to do their jobs, utilities, that sort of thing. And same with the water and sewer fund. Those things are not capital. Those are everyday operating expenses. Great. So give us uh, maybe some examples, a few examples of projects that we've done recently. Sure. Um, so, well, the, like I, I mentioned, the community center renovation was a big one that we did. Um, also, we recently paved Eccles Road, um, which is a very well-needed project uh, to repair the infrastructure there. Uh, we have purchased uh, the former house of property of Maud Robinson, a longtime council member and her uh, former husband and her husband who is a longtime mayor. Uh, that's over on between Courthouse and Cottage Road. So purchases of land like that. Um, the town green is, is a nice one that's several years old, but it's made a big impact on the town, uh, right in the middle of town, a place where we never thought we'd have a gathering place, that we have a lovely place to gather now. Great. So how was it developed each year? I know that we have a, a budget committee, so maybe describe the budget committee and uh, maybe talk a little bit about council's role and, sure. and how we arrive at having our CIP each year. Sure. Well, we per first uh, we do the CIP every fall, um, and we for uh, every spring we put out a, a call to directors. What sort of projects uh, do they think they need to help improve the delivery of town services and help uh, with the infrastructure of the town? Um, and then we take in all those. The budget committee gets to look through those. Department heads make their their. Uh, case about why this project is important, how it fits into the strategic plan. After we, we then, in the meantime, the finance department is forecasting the meals tax revenues because uh, we borrow money for capital projects, we pay it back with our meals taxes, so we don't want to exceed what we can comfortably pay back in our meals taxes plus leave a cash reserve. So we say we can, we let you know what the cap is, what we can spend, then uh, the budget committee sort of whittles all that together. Then council goes over the projects in detail at a, a work session that's coming up this year on September 21st, uh, and then makes some changes to that, and then we finalize the plan. Every other year, that plan is finalized to be the, the basis of a, a borrowing of bonds. Okay, great. So let's talk a little bit about um, the process of issuing bonds, how that works. Um, what would be good for residents to know about that? Sure, okay, so the process, all right, so we, um, we're sort of unique in the town of Vienna that we have a dedicated revenue stream to pay for our bonds. Uh, council decided back in the 1990s to institute a meals tax and dedicate that to only paying for capital projects. And capital projects 
uh, the way we pay for it with a bond, you can kind of liken to a mortgage in your home. Like you don't write a check for your house. I mean, if you right. do, good for you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but most people don't, right. and the town of Vienna can't either. So when we decided we needed to renovate the community center because it, it, was, it had been a long time since it had reno been renovated and we had a desire for more community space, um, we figured out how much it was going to cost and how long, and then over a 15 year period, how much we could pay back for it. Um, so then once we have that in place, uh, we actually uh, go to Wall Street. We don't, this year we did physically visit Wall Street. Most of the time we just call Wall Street and we, uh, we actually work with the financial advisors and bond rating agencies and they, uh, we, we tell them all the wonderful things we do in Vienna and, and what our financial situation is and then we get a bond rating out of that. And a bond rating is important because the, the higher the bond rating, the lower interest rate you have to pay for debt. So just like if you had a high, if you had a good credit rating, you get a low mortgage rate. We, the town, have a high bond rating, so we get a low interest rate on our bonds. And the town does have the highest bond rating available, AAA bond rating, and that allows us to borrow money at a low rate. Great, that's, that's exciting to uh, people like us who pay mm -hmm. attention to that, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, where do the funds come from to repay the bonds? I think you mentioned that a little bit earlier. Yes. For the most part, they come from our meals taxes. So let's think of the projects as two different types of projects. There are water and sewer projects. Those are not funded by meals taxes. Those projects are funded by fees from the water and sewer customers. So a portion of their fee is, uh, goes towards the infrastructure. Also, we, we, are not, um, we don't have our own water treatment plant, our own sewer treatment plant. So we have to pay for those services and pay for the capital costs of those services. So that comes out of the, the, the uh, water and sewer fees pay for that part. Everything else, like the community center, the town green, the roads, the sidewalks, mainly come from meals taxes and also outside grants. So meals taxes are a tax on anybody who eats in a restaurant in Vienna. Um, grants are things like uh, the Virginia Department of Transportation will give us money if we match it with our bond funds. You, you all may be aware that a few years ago, uh, the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority was established and collects an extra gas tax. We're getting a return of that now. Uh, we can apply for projects. So this, this is money. Meals, tax, meals taxes fund the bonds that we have to pay back. Grants, we don't have to pay back. So right. we've, uh, our departments, uh, in particular, um, uh, Public Works has done a great job of securing a lot of grant funding, which helps make our bond dollars go farther and deliver a good value for the people of Vienna. Great. And let's talk a little bit about why it's a good idea to have a CIP. When I think of the CIP or a capital improvement plan, think about all of the projects and needs that we have as a town and it far exceeds what we can handle all at once. And I think about how we can spread that out and, and make sure that we don't lose sight of project, projects that are important. So let's talk maybe a little bit about you know, yeah. why it's even important to have a CIP. That's a good, that's a good uh, way to describe it, Mercury, is, is uh, uh, since you've gotten here, we've forecasted out CIP for 15 years, um, 15, 16, almost 20 years, because we know there's things we'd like to do, but we know we can't borrow to the moon. Just like a realtor will tell you, oh, you can borrow all this much money, right. the state tells us we can borrow up to 10% of our assessed value, so 5.4 billion, we could borrow 540 million. We don't want to do that. We can't really afford to pay that back. We've, our uh, outstanding debt right now is around 60 million, so only 1% of our assessed value, because we know that we can comfortably pay that back. Right, right, and it's, it's kind of interesting, you think about 15 years, and that's so far out, but I guess in 2012 or, or so, when we started to have a CIP, we put in place this community center. That's right. And we said, okay, in the future, we'll, we'll plan to do that. And that date came, and so we were able to be prepared to, to handle that. Right, and we knew we had a lot of needs. We had needs for roads. We had needs for the police station, too. Really, the police station and, and uh, community center were both considered at the, uh, back in 2012 timeframe, but the community center went first. Right. Um, so by being able to plan like that, we could slot the police station in. We could, because it's a big project, we could save up money to make sure we had enough money to pay for that. Right. So and, we and built up a cash and balance. Speak, and speaking of having enough money, how do we know that we haven't borrowed too much money? Um, are there any particular limit, limits with regard to borrowing? And Well, yes. As I mentioned, the state will cap you out at 10% right. of your assessed value, but we're nowhere near that. We are 
more like 1%. Um, but we're forecasting our revenue flow and our grants that are coming in, you know, that we, uh, that we can estimate that we're going to get. And we want to make sure that we're covering our required debt payments plus have a cash cushion because you never know when there'll be an emergency. Big a big repair could also be a capital project. If the roof to town hall caved in, then we'd have right. to you know, spend some money for that. So we have to make sure we have a cushion there. So it's our own, that, so there are state limits and there are our own uh, internal limits to make sure that we're being prudent and cautious for the future. Sure. So for residents who are watching this right now, how can they give input regarding their thoughts about what the needs are for the town, maybe a need near their neighborhood or near their road. How, how would they even um, provide input? I know this is September and we have our work session with the council in a couple of weeks and then the council subsequently after that will take a vote. So how, how would residents even um, make their request or interest known? I would encourage them to reach out to their council people. Uh, our website is www.viennava.gov and our council members' emails are there under town council. Um, I know that there's also a transportation and safety commission, there's a mm -hmm. bicycle uh, commission, there's a pedestrian advisory commission, and all of those committees are also listed on our website and they uh, take those sort of matters up too to see if we can spend money for bike trails or for sidewalks and things like that. Sure, that, sound, that sounds great. That's some really good advice. Uh, now, I know that everyone would love to hear us talk all night long. We could probably <laughs> do this for a couple hours, but uh, this would probably be a good point to talk about the 2020 bond issuance. And the bulk of that bond issuance is with the construction of the new police facility. Now, we're going to talk a lot about that, as you know, uh, next month um, with my own deck with Mercury in October. Uh, so we won't give too much time to it tonight. But um, it just so happened that Chief Morris just found his way here tonight. So I'll ask him to, to come forward and just talk a bit about um, the police station project uh, here with, with the residents. Certainly, thank you. <laughs> uh, as you mentioned, we're going to talk about this next month, so I won't get too in depth. Uh, but the police department project was actually identified probably within five years of the current building being open. And since that time, through CIP and other fundings, we've taken incremental steps uh, to move forward. Two of the biggest steps were in 2018 when, through the CIP, we, we um, allocated um, architectural and engineering money. So for the last two years, we've been working with Dewberry to come up with a plan on what the building's gonna look like. And in 2020, the money to actually construct the building. Um, it's getting ready to go out sometime this week. Uh, we've identified construction companies that will be bidding on it. And at that point, the project will be moving forward for the next 18 to 24 months. Okay, all right, thank you very much. And we'll see you next month. Thank you, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, so we, we also have some public work projects. So we have Mike Gallagher with us, the director of, of public works. So we know that you have water and sewer improvements and road improvements and sidewalks. Um, talk a little bit about um, the CIP with regards to public works and some of the plans that you have. Okay, thanks Mercury, it's great to be here. Um, you mentioned the water and sewer projects. So in the 2020 bond, we have about $5.4 million dedicated to uh, improving our infrastructure for water and sewer, and that includes uh, water main replacements, water, line re uh, water main replacements, um, sewer relining, and what that does is really extends the life of our infrastructure for 50 more years. And we're challenged right now, we have a very uh, aging infrastructure where um, a, a couple of year, years ago we did a, a rate study, mm -hmm. as, as Marion mentioned, that the, the water and sewer rates fund the uh, water and sewer projects in the CIP. And we projected out um, about 20 years, I think, of a, of a rate study and what the rates would need to be to support a really um, aggressive capital program. And so um, I'm sure some residents have seen our contractor out um, in the last few months replacing many water mains. I know we did Fairway Drive, we did Upham Place, uh, we did uh, Center Street, and we're right now we're on Plum Street. Um, and so another, uh, another project we have in here, it's not, um, it's actually, it's a stream restoration for Piney Branch that's under construction. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's great about that is we're able to leverage our, um, the Fairfax County stormwater, stormwater tax that comes in 
Um, we're able to leverage that money with a DEQ grant to have fully uh, funded project that's outside of our um, bond. And um, stream restorations are really the most cost effective way to addressing water quality improvements. Uh, the Chesapeake Bay federal, federal uh, mandates require us to um, improve our water quality. And so stream restorations, uh, we've done uh, many of them. Uh, this is probably our fourth, mm -hmm. and I'll, in a few minutes, I'll be talking about another one coming in 2022. Um, another uh, little bit smaller project we have that's, that's interesting to um, many people would be some, we'll be able to do some of the improvements that are recommended in the multimodal study. Mm -hmm. um, there's about $215,000 to get us started on um, maybe some designs, maybe even implementing some improvements for um, one of the top ones we're looking at is improving where the WOD trail crosses at Park Street, Maple Avenue, Church Street, and Air Hill. Um, we'll be able to make some improvements there. Um, so those are kind of a highlight of a few, few projects. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, also part of our uh, CIP is our, our property acquisition, and um, it's a significant piece, and we just had the opportunity to uh, purchase uh, Faith Baptist Church, um, which is a very important um, pr property acquisition for, for the town because of this location. Um, it's situated um, near Town Hall across from Waters Field, um, next to the police station, down from the fire department, uh, down from uh, across from Vienna Elementary School. Um, so it's kind of in, in the heart of, of the town, right nestled within uh, the municipal services. And so I kind of look at, at this acquisition as similar to when the town acquired the town green. Uh, the council then had a vision of, of what that would be, and we now have the town green, and it's part of the culture of, of what Vienna is. And so it is our, is our hope that uh, Faith Baptist Church would be something similar that uh, years down the road we'll be able to uh, enjoy this property acquisition in a similar fashion, uh, whatever, that, whatever that would end up being. I know that there may be some residents who may ask um, how that kind of a purchase comes about. I have with us the town attorney, Steve Brillia, and he can speak briefly about how, how that, that comes about. Mr. Town Manager, distinguished panelists, thank you for having me. Um, I'll, I'll be brief and just give a, a quick summary of how the town acquired the uh, Faith Baptist Church property. Um, I, I would say generally the town acquires property in, in three methods, three ways. Um, traditionally municipalities have the authority of condemnation um, and, and that's generally used when you need to build a new road, uh, when you need to acquire property for specific public facility, maybe a, a water treatment plant or you have to get in right away for water lines, those kind of things. And, and those are where the, the, the locality just is allowed to buy that property and the only thing the property owner can dispute is really the price, not whether it's going to be purchased. It's an extreme measure. The town of Vienna, uh, we're very blessed. Um, uh, we we rarely, rarely have to do it that way. We don't want to be at odds with property owners and citizens. Um, the, the next method of acquiring property would be a regular advertised sale. Uh, commercial real estate, residential real estate, a sign goes up like you see. That's the most common way people think real estate is purchased. Uh, and it is very common for residential. For other types of properties, not so much. Uh, there's a third method of acquiring real estate, and that's what I would refer to as a negotiated purchase, where the seller is either approached uh, by a prospective buyer or they go out and solicit specific buyers and, and ask them to make offers. It's, it's not a private sale, um, but it is not certainly where there's a sign in front of the property. Um, so often people don't know about that. Many properties in the town of Vienna have turned over over the years without anybody being aware. Most recently, the giant shopping center sold, um, and there wasn't a for sale sign. It went from one property management, uh, real estate management company to another. That was most expensive per land purchase in Vienna's history, and most people didn't even hear about it until it was after it was done. Um, to acquire the Faith Baptist Church property goes back actually many, many years. Um, the church approached the town years ago to, to see if the town was interested in selling a portion of their property, um, the old rectory building, which they weren't even using as a rectory anymore. 
and the town was interested in anticipation of possible renovations to the police department. So that piece of property was acquired in 2013. At that time, the town was curious and asked the church, not that they were advertising or saying they wanted to, but if they ever wanted to sell where the Faith Baptist Church was, the town might be interested if we could come up with a price. And, and the primary reason at that time was the town was looking to acquire additional park, uh, park space. Um, the town had a huge increase in, in, in children. Um, the numbers in the town had grown. And so there was a need from the community um, uh, for additional park space, recreational use. Um, so I think that was on the council's radar screen. Um, obviously, the community center where we are today uh, was, was something that the council not only wanted to renovate but expand. We're in the new gym portion. Um, as you mentioned earlier, that was paid with bond funds. And that was a result of community input. What kind of needs um, does, did the community feel uh, the town needed to address? Um, you can have all the needs in the world, but if you don't have the land uh, to build the facilities, um, they're, they're going to be on a list of things you want. Well, what happened is the, the church decided to change their mission, Faith Baptist Church. The congregation did, and it was a, a very big decision for them. They came to the town and asked if the town might be interested. We said we were. They had some other people they had approached. Um, the town submitted a proposal and made it clear the town was not in the land development business, was not in the land speculation business. The town acquired the property. It would be for community use. Um, I think that had... Uh, um, uh, some weight with the, the congregation. It took, was a congregation vote to sell the property. Um, and the town, fortunately, was a successful bidder. Uh, and there's going to be a brief lease back portion time while the church is transitioned, so they'll still be using their sanctuary and, and some other areas of the church. Um, and so that purchase was a negotiated purchase. The council gave the town manager and myself authority to negotiate, just like any other private party can negotiate. Um, a fair question people have asked me is, uh, you know, how come that wasn't public beforehand? Mm -hmm. And my answer would be, as an attorney maybe, is, well, the town's in no worse position and should be in no worse position to acquire prime pieces of property as a private purchaser. Uh, the, the, the decision of what kind of uses, obviously a public decision, obviously your elected officials. The elected officials were always the driving force uh, uh, for acquiring the property, this and other properties. Same thing happened. A very similar acquisition was the town green. That property owner approached the town. The town had made it known if Mr. George ever was interested in selling that property, the town might be interested. At that time, the town had to put together a finance package with bubble gum and bailing wire, but was able to acquire it and then build a park sometime later. Um, and that's the town green as you know it. But it had a commercial office building, uh, retail and office building on it before. So. Um, like I said, uh, the, the Faith Baptist Church is similar in that regards. The, the owners knew that the town might be interested if the timing was right, and the timing was right based on our bond issue, and the council had set aside money for property acquisition uh, in the last bond issue. So in a nutshell, that's how it happened. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So now that the town has some new properties in its portfolio, uh, we need to determine how the community can best utilize them. And we have with us the Director of Parks and Recreation, Leslie Herman. Uh, maybe talk about this a little bit, about how we uh, would go about the best use for some of these properties. Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, so what the, the town plans on doing is holding a feasibility study for these newly acquired properties so that we can actually take a look at what the available options will be um, for development and public outreach and community involvement will also be, um, will be held uh, because we want to hear from the uh, town residents as to what they would like to see. So that will be part of the study. And then it will also um, determine also the findings and analysis uh, and conclusions um, to provide us with visioning. And so from there, um, as part of the 2020 CIP, a park master plan was approved by council. And so there's funding there, so uh, based off the feasibility study, um, it will determine what pieces of property will be included in the park's master plan, which will give us a, um, a long-term planning document for us in the future as to what we want to do with our existing parks and also what the planning is for these other uh, acquisitions that have been identified uh, for park use. Wow. So, so the feasibility study for this property and others would inform the greater park master plan that you plan on doing later? That is correct. Okay. 
Well, good, thank you, that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. So another um, aspect of our CIP is um, public parking being a goal for the town. It's been uh, on the plans for a number of years. Um, maybe um, Marion, Director of Finance, um, talk with us a little bit about where we are with some, some of the, the goals with regards to parking. Sure, um, thank you, Mercury. We have been, uh, appro as uh, the town attorney mentioned, uh, Steve Brilla, we have been approached over the years with uh, people who had land to sell, to sell potentially for uh, public parking. It's been a goal of the towns to deliver some public parking, especially on the, the Church Street corridor. We've had some partnerships that for various reasons didn't, didn't pan out. Um, the latest of those has been affected by the pandemic in some portion, but we do have a partnership working with the the county, the Patrick Henry Library, which is catty corner from Town Hall and right in the corner of Maple and Center, is slated for uh, renovation. We re we've been working with the, the county for over a year, almost two years, I think, to uh, join with them to build some public parking plus library parking. We would only pay for, the town would only pay for the portion that is the town's use only. Now, the county uh, won't go forward till they have their bond referendum in November, but once the county has a pretty high success rate of passing bonds. Once their bond referendum gets passed, um, we have borrowed money to share in the design costs for that. We have a contract with the county. We have many places where if we don't uh, like the way the project's going, we could exit the contract. But we have also secured a grant uh, for $2.3 million from the uh, Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. And it looks like we may, nothing's been decided yet but it's a possibility to use that grant there. We also borrowed money for the last public partner, uh, private partner in 2020, uh, $2.4 million. That money is also available, and then we have borrowed money in the 2020 bond for the development cost, for the design costs for the library parking. So there, this is one where a plan is good because there's <laughs> lots of, the eventuality may be different, but we've, at least we're working on it and we've got a plan, and hopefully that we'll see that plan to fruition. But many, we've got some possibilities for outside funding and bond funding, sure. and we hope we'll see that to a conclusion. Well, good. That sounds very exciting, particularly because we've been talking about that for a number of years. So mm -hmm. look forward to seeing that um, come about at some point. Uh, so uh, to, to round out the discussion here, uh, let's talk about the 2022 uh, bond and beyond. And, that's gonna be generally the focus uh, when we get together with the council and work session on uh, September 21st. Um, so what are some of the more significant projects being proposed in the 2022 bond? And maybe we can do a lightning round type of uh, fashion here a little bit with, with uh, the director of public works, the director of planning and zoning and our economic development manager. So I'll start off with, um, with, with Mike, our public works director. What are some of the significant projects that are at least being planned for in the 2022 bond and beyond. Okay, uh, so one of the uh, newer things that's gonna be put into the bonds is um, uh, asphalt mill and overlay. Um, in 2022, we're, we're projecting about $1.5 million of town bond funding. And what we're finding is that as we analyze our streets, our pavement condition, um, we're finding that at our current level of investment, mm -hmm. the, you know, the condition is worsening. So we really um, we need to be proactive and um, keep that from, from getting too low. Um, I had mentioned um, another stream restoration project, mm -hmm. the Bear Branch Stream Restoration Project, which is in the Southside Park. Um, and what we're, gonna tr what we're planning to do is apply for a transportation grant to also install uh, park trails in that corridor uh, to make that a more active amenity and accessible amenity. And that would also allow us to tie to the projected trail along I-66. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some various uh, studies that we'd like to get done based on our multimodal transportation study. One is a, a local circulator study. Um, we wanna look at a streetscape master plan and design guidelines, as well as um, look at a long-range transportation master plan, which is something the town doesn't doesn't have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, next, um, our Parks and Recreation Director Leslie Herman. Anything that you see on the horizon that you're excited about for the residents? Yes. 
Mike had mentioned the uh, Bear Branch uh, stream restoration that's going to be taking place at Southside Park. And due to that, the um, Southside Field 1, which is the lit field, will be disturbed. The areas of um, disturbance will um, impact the outfield of the Field 1. So it's a perfect time for us to actually do a renovation to Field 1, which is, is very much needed. Um, it doesn't drain well. There's no irrigation in the outfield. Um, so that will... Um, also new lights, similar to what we've done over at Glendon Park, the LED, so there's um, little spill of light, where right now if you're walking up on, um, the, on uh, Walker Street, take, walking your dog, you can see the whole back of the neighborhood is um, behind those houses is lit up when there's ball games going on. So that will um, improve that area. Um, so the timing is good because it's um, 2022 for the, um, the, the stream restoration plus the work that's going to be done at um, Field 1 and also Vienna Little League has expressed an interest in improving Field 2. So that will be a full um, athletic field renovation um, to Southside, which will be really nice. Um, a long time coming. Um, we're also uh, looking at doing some improvements over at Glendon Park. We have the trail that connects Beulah to Glendon. Uh, through the park and it has a lot of crumbling areas on the sides of the trail um, that can be um, dangerous somebody could step off or off the trail um, and also some undermining roots uh, from the trees that are actually causing the trail to pop up and then there's a project that um, Public Works is working on in Glendon Street um, that's going to end up changing um, a little bit of that it's a drainage project I believe that's correct yeah, drainage and sidewalk. Drainage and sidewalk. So um, it's a perfect time to uh, repave that front parking lot there at Glendon. So that'll be a complete project there as well. So we've got some park improvements um, coming way. And also the Freeman store um, and little library. Um, they're due for a, a good painting on the exterior and also a new roof. So it's been many, many years, actually, um, many, many, many years <laughs> since the roof was replaced. So that's another um, item that we have for 2022. Okay. All right, thank you. And Natalie Moncow, our Economic Development Manager. Um, so, so maybe share a few things on the horizon. Sure, so what I love about economic development is that we're focused on our commercial corridors or our central business districts, which are on Maple Avenue and on Church Street. So this will give us a opportunity to actually light up those commercial areas and invite people to shop and to eat and to relax in our commercial corridors. What's really important about this is that we're inviting tourism, we're inviting visitors. Marion mentioned earlier about the meal tax being a really big important part of paying back our debt and and one way to do that is to invite people to come and to eat here but we also want to make it an attractive location easy to ride your bike easy to walk and so we're looking at investment in wayfinding signs looking at tree lighting to make the actual commercial corridors attractive. We're also looking at ways to bring in public art into our commercial corridors as well. So there are a few really exciting, which you'll see the visual beautification of the town through these proposed projects. Okay, all right, thank you very much. All right here, and we'll, we'll end, I guess, the conversation with our director of um, finance, Marion Surface talking about some even longer term um, projects that you see on the horizon here for the, for the town. Sure, thank you, Mercury. Uh, yes, as Mike uh, mentioned, we're, we, are, we do have a commitment to improving our roadways. We, um, Mike uh, contracted with a pavement study company and we need to put some more investment in our roads so that they don't crumble. Um, we are gonna be continuing to invest in our water and sewer infrastructure. Council committed to that. Um, uh, we are looking at signage, we're looking at improvements to the town green, and as Leslie mentioned, other parks are slated in, in uh, the future, besides Southside Park for new playground equipment. Uh, that'll be happening in the future. Uh, as we mentioned, we are developing a public parking garage. Uh, there'll, be mul uh, there'll be multimodal, more multimodal transportation uh, recommendations. We may strategically have other property acquisitions or decide what we're going to do at, as a result of this feasibility study that we're gonna have for the project properties we, all, we have already. Uh, and also we're looking at long-term uh, burying utility lines on Maple Avenue with the help of redevelopment. Okay. So those are some of the big ones. Well, that sounds very exciting. Um, and and, and Marion knows this, you know, the, the budget process and the CIP I think is part of our favorite time of the year for, for <laughs> us. I don't know yeah. about the rest of the staff, but we get excited about this stuff. 
So um, that is um, pretty much what we have for us this evening. Um, I don't think there are any questions from uh, the audience here. Um, and we always like to uh, have questions from the audience whenever we have an opportunity. So um, basically at this point, I'd like to acknowledge a few people here with us. We have um, our mayor, um, Linda Colbert, is here with us. So hi, mayor, Madam Mayor. And we have the Honorable um, Council, Council Member Howard Springsteen. So thank you for, for joining us as well. Uh, and so that concludes what we have for us uh, this evening. Uh, just a few um, notes here before we end. Um, first one is uh, remember to stay safe. Um, stay home if you're sick. Wear your face covering. Stay at least six feet apart if you can and wash your hands frequently. And lastly, I'll mention that for our October On Deck with Mercury, we plan on having a conversation with um, Police Chief Chief Morris about the police station project as well as uh, Gary Scott, the director of Office of Elections for Fairfax County is also going to be here to talk about the upcoming elections and what you can expect with regards to uh, when to vote, how to vote, and all of those details, which I'm sure everyone will probably be very interested in. So please tune in again on October 13th for our next On Deck with Mercury. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful evening. Take care. <laughs>